computer hardware. What's the minimum spec computer you need to go through a typical programming course and just to program in general? Let's talk about that in today's video. Welcome back, my name is Tim Bacharka with another programming tip of the day and we're talking about computer hardware and what a typical conf configuration is or the minimal configuration to be able to go through a typical programming course and just to program in general. Well I'd say in general these days that most modern computers that have been uh, manufactured over the last three or four years, be they Windows machines, Linux machines or a Mac, you should be fairly safe with those. The only stipulation I would make there is to try and aim to have at least eight gigabytes of RAM in your computer. Now a lot of computers these days still come with four gigabytes as a base, but uh, with today's uh, software using lots of memory, they're quite complex tools because they help you to produce rich applications, they need a lot of memory to operate. So try and make sure that you spec sufficiently for eight gigabytes or even more of RAM. Now I go a bit crazy, I guess because I'm a geek, I've got 128 gig of RAM in my computer, which is definitely overkill for most people. But eight gigabytes of RAM, I would say to me, that's the minimum amount of RAM you wanna have, just to make it a no brainer that you're not gonna have problems. So if you're running less than that, if you've got like four gigabytes of RAM, what's gonna happen? Well, depending on the platform you're targeting, you might find things are really, really slow. So things will take a long time to load, there'll be noticeable delays when you type, and it'll just be a very frustrating experience. So it's not to say that you won't be able to, to program, but the experience won't be nice. So I would suggest for that reason, eight gigabytes of RAM and a relatively modern computer, and you'll be good to go. Now if you're talking specific configurations of Windows, um, I'm not gonna go into video cards or processes any more than to say that uh, a relatively modern CPU, perhaps an i5 or higher, something like that of uh, that nature will be fine. And if you don't know what that means, just try and target a relatively recent computer and make sure you're not choosing the bottom of the run computer. In terms of laptops, I would uh, go for a relatively new one, but it's got, it's got basically got enough memory, that's the most important thing. And uh, if you're on a desktop, I would uh, do the same thing. Again, make sure that uh, your memory's there, but also getting back to the desktop and uh, laptop screen size is important as well. This is a factor when you're learning how to program. The more screen real estate you've got, in other words, the larger the screen, the better it's going to be. Because you've got to factor in that uh, you're going to be watching a video and hopefully typing along. So it'd be great if you had uh, a monitor and a sufficient resolution to be able to watch the video and to have enough space left on your screen to be able to type it in. Now it's not to say you can't watch a bit of the video, pause it, and then tab over to your, uh, your IDE, the editor you're using to type in the code and do it that way, but it's a lot better if you've got a large monitor. So if your budget can afford to um, spend extra on a monitor, I would certainly recommend you do that. If you're on a laptop, consider buying a cheap external monitor and plugging that in. That way you can actually watch the video on the external monitor and do your programming on the laptop uh, screen itself. And likewise for a desktop, if, you've got a, if you haven't got a large monitor, consider getting a second one or invest in a larger one. But obviously see how you go first. But in an optimal scenario, I would suggest you had two monitors or one monitor large enough, large enough that you can actually see both things at once. All right, so that's important. Memory is important, but also to a degree it's dependent on what uh, you're targeting. So in other words, if you're targeting Apple's iOS, so in other words, the iPhone, the iPad, or even targeting Mac itself to write Mac applications, that would generally necessitate the need for you to have a Mac. And that's because the Apple development tools to produce uh, iPad, iPhone, and Mac applications are Mac-based. So keep that in mind, do some research before, if you're not, uh, or if you are, have, uh, you, know, you basically know what you're going to program in or program for, make sure that uh, you've got the right hardware for that. So you, in this case, uh, in the case of Mac, buy a Mac if you want to target Mac, iPhone, or iPad. Now there are exceptions to that, by the way, just really quickly, I don't want to get too far off track. You can uh, build something called a Hackintosh, which is a cheap way to get into a Mac, but there's legality, legal issues there, which I won't go into, but uh, you can uh, search for the term Hackintosh if you want more information on that. But uh, memory is really the most important thing. I would focus on that first, and your screen size, and other than that, uh, if you've got a relatively modern computer, you should be good to go. All right, now if you've got any other questions relating to computer hardware, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to address those here as well.
Alrighty, so I hope that helped. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. If you're ready to look at the next tip, click on up here and you can check that out. If you're interested in coding specific programming videos, click on the link in the bottom left hand corner. Consider subscribing by clicking on the link up here and I'll see you soon.